After weeks of gang violence with more than 50 shootings on Chicago streets, we put new focus on a highly touted gang book that claims to identify who the leaders are. Tonight, WGN investigates. Good evening. I'm Mark Sapelson. I'm Micah Mater. After one of those shootings killed a six-year-old, the mayor and police superintendent accelerated their revamped gang strategy. Yesterday, dozens were identified as gangbangers and arrested. But what happens when a book praised by all of top law enforcement for its detailed portrayal of gangs in Chicago gets some of its information dead wrong? It's a new, glossy, 300-page encyclopedia billed as the most complete account of gangs in Chicago and the suburbs. The Chicago Crime Commission put it together with help from the Chicago Police Department and the Cook County Criminal Intelligence Unit of the Sheriff's Department. In bold, splashy colors, it shows the tattoos and hand signs of gangs like the Black Pea Stone Nation, the Insane Dragons, the Latin Kings, and the 2-6 Gang. But our investigation found there are page after page of mistakes, enough to bring this room full of men before our cameras to say they've been wrongly targeted. Uh, shame, you know. I talked to my mom, she cried, you know, I cried with her. Danny Spain is no innocent. At 18, he and his 2-6 Gang were involved in a murder. He spent the next 20 years of his life in prison. I paid my cry, you know. They're saying I'm a leader. I'm not the leader of nothing. You know, I want to raise my family. I want to walk down the street with my kid. I don't want them being shot. I don't want to be shot at. People that's not. As a teen, Tim White joined the traveling vice lords. He got caught with heroin and was sent straight to prison. When was the last time, what year was it, that you were part of a gang and you had some trouble? Man, I've been out of the street life over 20 some years now. You know, and uh, I just, I mean, 20 I some? Over, over 20 some years. And, uh, that's why I'm here today. Professor, he's been in your class before. You can vouch for what he's saying? Absolutely. And not only Tim, but there are many other individuals um, uh, who have been um, placed in the book or affiliated with organizations uh, associated that have been helpful and doing positive things in the community. Sure, White is working that. in the ministry and going back to school. Yes. So too is Danny Spain. He's frustrated that his picture ended up in the book. You know, what I got to do, you know, to better myself. I mean, I don't know what to do. I really don't. Are you working right now, too? Yeah, I work two jobs. Well, the book says you can't change, that once your, your picture is here, so you're, you did something bad once upon a time, and that means you're evil forever. And, you know, what you see from around here is people have changed. We don't know what evidence the Crime Commission has to put these men in the books. They won't tell us. All we can say for sure is that these men and the dozen supporting them say their gangland years are long gone. You know, my rage is it's a, it's a defamation of my character. I mean, all these years I've put in in the ministry trying to change guys from being in gangs, now you put me back in a book and tell the guys I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm presently involved in the gang, and it's an outrage. What we can prove is, on this page, 185, Matthew Williams listed as a leader of the Imperial Insane Vice Lords. He's been dead for several years. Page 60, Tyrone Freeman, a leader of the Black Disciples. Not possible. He's been dead since 2007. And this Latin King leader pictured on page 104, Antonio Glenn, a.k.a. Spooky, born in 1978. But wait. Here's his picture again on page 105. Different name, different alias. Fat Mike, born eight years earlier. Same picture, two different guys. And turn to page 191, and you'll find the infamous Willie Lloyd. He was a legend on these streets, leader of a vicious gang. His life made into the docudrama dubbed The Holy City. For decades into the 90s, he was without a doubt the leader of the unknown vice lords, even though he'd spent most of his life in prison. When he walked out of Logan Correctional Center, he was decked out in mink and driving off with five limousines in tow. So is he still a gang leader? The Crime Commission says yes. But eight years ago, he was paralyzed after being shot four times as he walked his dog in Garfield Park. Now at 62, he's a quadriplegic living in Minnesota. Yet here he is, listed as a Chicago leader in the new gang book. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. If, in fact, there were uh, mistakes that were made when it was published uh, this time. Jim Wagner used to run the Crime Commission and, in fact, put out the first gang book years ago with no questions raised. I don't know how rapidly they put this together, nor do I know how many people uh, reviewed it. So I think those are things that have to be looked at.
It's not that unusual. Three weeks ago, Jody Weiss, the man who introduced the new gang book to the public, resigned from the Crime Commission. He wouldn't return our call, and no one else would talk on camera, saying only, the Chicago Crime Commission assumes no responsibility for any inaccuracies contained in their book. Instead, it points a finger at the Chicago Police Department, saying they're the ones who keep the mug shots. Superintendent Gary McCarthy. I don't point fingers, and I don't think anybody else should be pointing fingers. After all, it is the Crime Commission, not the Police Department, that put the pictures in the book. Having law enforcement sensitive information in the public eye can be a problem, and if it is law enforcement sensitive, then we probably should have kept it to ourselves and used it for our own means. I don't know what we gain out of publishing it, quite frankly. And it's the Crime Commission telling us it, quote, regrets a minor editorial error that misplaced a photo of one individual over another. All of that, not nearly good enough for these men who say they've left the gangs and are on to new lives. So I have to stand up, be proactive, instead of waiting on them to say something about me in the book or my child coming home telling me that his kids don't want to play with him because his dad is a gang member, and I'm not a gang member. The Cook County Sheriff also wrote a letter of endorsement published in the front of the book. The sheriff says it works with the Chicago Police Gang Units in providing some of the information the Crime Commission used here. The Sheriff's Department insists its intelligence shows Danny Spain and Willie Lloyd are still influential gang members, despite what they say. But it said it was the Commission's decision to publish the pictures of the dead men anyway. As for the book, it can be found on commercial bookstore websites, about 30 bucks. When the Crime Commission introduced it, it was called a training tool for law enforcement, parents, educators, and business owners who may know little about street gangs operating in the cities and suburbs right next to them. You can follow this story and other of our investigations on Facebook and Twitter at WGN Investigates. Micah?